five. Here we roll. There's already a ton of questions for him. <laughs> And welcome to Bench Monster TV. I'm Ashley Lynn Condre. And I am the Bench Monster. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Hope you've had a good week. We're super excited for tonight's episode. As you all know, we have a very special guest tonight. Scott Mendelson is on the show. So let's yeah. not uh, wait, wait dilly dally any time. Let's move right into this. I have some of Scott's credentials. As I introduce him, I'll play this little intro <laughs> video, and then we'll bring Scott on, and we will ask him questions. Start asking questions. All right, as these little videos play here, uh, Scott is a five-time world champion, a three-time national champion, 2002 Arnold Classic champion, U.S. national champion arm wrestler. Scott Mendelson has 66 world records. Scott is the only heavyweight to hold both the shirted and the raw record at the same time. And he's a very proud father of four. I've known Scott for many, many moons, and I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it was not for Scott, and that's no bullshit. <laughs> we'll get into that later, but uh, you know, he's, uh, he's pushed me, and he's pushed me, and I don't know where I'd be without him, and uh, I'm very excited to have him on the show tonight, and the last video we're seeing here is the 1121 that he dropped upon himself. We'll talk about that a little bit. That was a scary situation. Oof. Yep. <laughs> uh, every time I watch. <laughs> uh. Well, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce one of the baddest, cover your ears because I'm going to say a bad word, one of the baddest motherfuckers walking the face of this planet, Scott Mendelson. And uh, Scott, how you doing, brother? Hi, Scott. Well, man, thanks for thanks for having me on. It's I guess this is about time we get together. Yeah, we right? hardly see each other anymore, man. I'm, I'm glad you took the time to sit down and uh, and chill with us for a while. It's a pleasure. Hey, for you. I'm excited, Scott. You, I, I'm ten minutes ago, Scott. I, I went to the bathroom like four times. I'm kind of <laughs> nervous. So having on a legend as yourself and uh, it gives me chills, man. It really does. I ain't bullshitting you. Hey, remember that's no different from when you compete against me. It's the same thing, bro. It's okay. Yeah, yeah well, well, you're, you're like a you're, you're like one of my idols, my role models, man. You really are, man. And uh, the, I wouldn't be the person I am today if it wasn't for you. And uh, you, uh, just like I said, man, the things you've done to push me and Man, just looking back, uh, some of the internet uh, trash talking we had, and <laughs> on and on. It's been fun, man. Let's. Uh, we got a lot of questions, so I hope you have a lot of answers for us, Scott. And you can keep them as short as you want. And uh, just like I said, Ashley here has like a whole bunch of questions. So I'm cutting them off. I'm sorry. The I'm excited. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Fucking Christ! Can I get a word? Like, right? I know. Welcome to my <laughs> life. This is every episode with me. I have to fight to get a, a word in. So. I apologize. I <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> hey, it's an honor to be here, bro. And you know what? Right back at you, bro. You drove me just as hard as I drove you. I appreciate that. Tell your mom I love her and I'm still sorry, okay? <laughs> I, I, that must we'll be have the, to explain that. The go heavy post. I remember. Yes. <laughs> back in the day. I have to hear more yeah. about that. Yeah. All right, Scott. Well, we got a ton of questions. Let's get you right know. into it. And them, then the, if you don't mind. The, the, I, I think the chat's going to fill up too. It's already filled up with questions. So, okay. So, when and how did you get into weightlifting in general? And then, how were you introduced into powerlifting? Well, you guys can go on the Scott Mendelson channel and there's a whole story about it. But I went to prison and that's how I started lifting weights. Uh, one of my friends almost killed somebody and I didn't snitch him off. And I ended up going to jail for three and a half years. Oh. And at that time, I found myself, you know, um, people have their military, people have their college, people have their this and that. Well, prison was my way of uh, bringing me into manhood. And, um, you know, if I had to do it all over again, I'd be like, let's go. Right. Really? You know, when it happened, I was like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? But you know what? If that did not happen to me, me and you would have never gone through what we went through. I would never be Scott Mendelson who I am today. So I'm grateful for it. 
was uh was that like a gladiator academy academy was it pretty was it was a simple area to do time I was, in or i was in youth authority which was highly volatile um basically it 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 was gladiator camp and for the first year I fought like every fucking oh, day if, unless i was locked down Jeez. so it was uh it was pretty crazy you know what yeah. i mean <clears throat> but um you know i mean when when somebody says, "Hey, what did what are you here for?" and you're like, "Well, I didn't do it," I was, when they're like, "Yeah, sure, you didn't do it. None of us did it. We're all innocent." After a while, you're like, "Fuck it, just whatever. I, I'm in." Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, it, uh, it was something that I had to uh, kind of grasp and and run with it, and I did that. And uh, you know, it's real racial in yeah. jail, so it doesn't matter how big and bad you are. You got to pick a side. That's true. I picked the side and, uh, you know, it was what it was. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. And then is that, did you, like when you came out, did you start powerlifting right away or like, how did you kind of get into powerlifting and competing? Well, I was, uh, I, I knew that I wanted to do something in weightlifting and I, I started building and I did a few shows and, Didn't know that. um, you know, I, started to kind of grasp what I wanted to do, but you know, bodybuilding is a weird, a weird place. And, uh, I got offered an opportunity to <clears throat> excel in it. Um, but I had to do favors and that's not what I wanted to do. Right. So I was always stronger than everybody else. And I, I always wanted to be the strongest dude in the world. I mean, it was something that I just had in my bones. So, you know, I don't need to do any fit if I lift more weight than you. Give me my check. Okay. <laughs> so, that's what I started doing. Okay. okay. Nice. Did you play any sports in high school? If so, which ones? I played football in high school. Um, I played baseball in high school. Um, but I had, uh, you know, I didn't have a father. My father left uh, when I was nine. And I didn't have any, like, direction. So I got into gangs and drugs and, you know, not taking them, selling right. them. So, you know, I uh, I had to survive. I had nothing. And I had all these friends that had, like, everything. And, you know, I had to claw and fucking do whatever I had to do to get what I needed to get. Um, and, you know, I ended up going to prison something that I didn't do, but there was 20 million other things that I did do to go to prison. So I guess that's kind of God's way of calm the fuck down, you know? So as far as sports, I mean, I really never really got to excel hard in them because I was in prison. Right. Wow. I wrestled. Um, I, I pulled a second place in the big apple games for freestyle wrestling I pulled a third place in the Empire State Games for Greco-Roman. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, so I was a wrestler. My father was a wrestling coach. He coached the New York team. Okay, okay that's cool. I really thought that he let me on the team, but I fucking busted my ass. He killed me twice as hard as everybody else. <clears throat> but, um, you know, after that, I had a stepmom issue. She hated my fucking guts, and she basically just drove me out. So at 14, I went back. I never saw my father again. Until I broke my first world record. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's crazy. So, you know, everybody's, you know, as soon as you do something great, fucking the roaches crawl out of the fucking wood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's done. Da, da, da. Right. So, yeah. yeah. But you know what? You, you have to move on and you have to learn to forgive because if you don't, it'll burn a hole in you and that evil hole will be the end of you. So I forgave my father. And we still talk to this day. Oh, cool. Good. And, yeah. you know, you got to let the negativity yeah. go. Yeah. That's just the way. You know. For sure. You know, so, so anyway, I got out of prison and uh, I got a job at a gym and I started bodybuilding and building my body up. And <clears throat> I didn't even know how to bench and I was hitting, the, you know, 640 close grip. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I saw I was eating with my uh, girlfriend at the time, which ended up being my wife. And we're leaving the restaurant. And I see this little magazine hut. And as I'm walking by, I see Powerlifting USA. And I was like, whoa, this is like 99, you know. 
So I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I go in and I buy the magazine. So I'm sitting down and I'm going through all this shit. And I'm like, fuck, the California State Championships are next week. Like, like right over here, you know. And she's like, well, are you in shape? And I'm like, fuck, I don't know what, maybe these guys, I'm hitting 640. Maybe these guys are hitting eight or 900. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> now, so I go there and J.M. Blakely is there. A couple other pros, uh, Al Garcia, and a couple other dudes back in the back in the day, and um, uh, I I managed to dump six hundred pounds. I dropped it on my chest because I was benching full screen. Oh, you know, and I went to the hospital and they gave me a morphine shot. And nothing was wrong with me. I'm all fucked up on morphine, and I'm like, you know, I think I fucking won. I think I won. <laughs> And I'm like, I didn't see anybody else hit nothing. So I walk in and everybody's fucking clapping, you know? And I'm looking over, I'm all wasted on fucking morphine. I look over and I'm like, you know, looking for somebody to like hit a great lift. And they were like cheering, you know what I mean? But I was so, I didn't realize that they were cheering for me when I walked through the door, <laughs> you know? That's cool. So I was like, yeah, I started meeting everybody. And that's where my powerlifting career began. Nice. So, you know. It was it was interesting. <laughs> interesting start. That's cool though. I like that. How much did you squat, bench, and deadlift in high school? Like as a freshman and then as a senior, if you were lifting back then. I I never really squatted until I was like nineteen okay. because in prison they don't have squats. Right. So, but I squatted a thousand pounds raw in my prime. Oh wow! I never. I never really wanted to do a full meet because I didn't have that much time available. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody else was training like five days a week. And I just, I had to train people all day and shit. So I couldn't afford not to work. So, and I had my family starting and all this other shit. So it was like, you know, it was, it was tough for me. So I just did what I loved, right. you know? Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I got nothing against full lifters. I love full lifters. I give them all the respect in the world. But nobody gives a fuck what you squat or what you deadlift. I agree. <laughs> all they care about is what you bench. You're lucky you're the guest, so I'm going to keep my mouth sealed. Everybody, I get all the glory and a third of the fucking work. <laughs> even though I have everything, but you know I what I mean. Uh... Yeah. Oh, okay. And I know some of you people out there are like, fuck I you, know. Mandy. <laughs> I don't really give a fuck you do, <laughs> but the bottom line is, it's the truth. All right. <laughs> how much can you bench and how big are your arms? I mean, that's what people... Hey, we were in the store one time and they asked us how much we deadlifted. We've been asked that before. I've, I've been asked I've been asked many life. times how much I squat and deadlift. Yeah. Thank you. But anyways... Yeah, well, your sounds wet. They know you don't bench <laughs> a lot. Oh, oh, I don't like the, where this is going. I'm going to move on to the next question. <laughs> I liked when we were on the same side against him. I don't, I don't like you against me. Um, How much did you weigh in high school? I was, uh, I was about 210 pounds. 210, okay. That's a big kid. Yeah. When was... When, which we you kind of already answered this, but when was your first meet and how much did you bench? I know you kind of already explained that, but I, first meet, I don't even remember what I benched, but it was a world record and I did it. Um, I must have been like 27 and they said it was a world record. I don't even remember the Federation. It was at this fucking like bar thing. And I mean, you know, these gnarly motherfuckers were there and I <laughs> And then I was like, whoa, what the fuck's going on here? So I was like, yeah, you know, they're like, how much do you bench? And I said, well, I'm going to go for 585. And they were like, huh, where's your weight belt? And I was like, what? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I look around and I see this big fucking white boy. He must have been like 6'5", 300 pounds with two schwa stickers. Or not schwa stickers, two lightning bolts on his chest. And I'm like, that motherfucker knows what he's talking about. <laughs> So I walk home and I'm like, hey, bro, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. But, you know, he goes, well, where's your equipment? I'm like, I don't have equipment. And he's like, you, give me a singlet. You, give me a weight belt. And he fucking puts me together and I go out and I hit this shit. And then I was like, fuck it. I did it. 
that's it. So I stopped. And, uh, you know, until I did that meet where I dropped the weight on myself, it was years later. And I don't even think it was a real sanctioned meet, but they were all talking shit like it was. And I didn't know shit about powerlifting. I didn't know about anything. So, you know, that's how you get your feet wet. You go with a bunch of guys that don't know what the fuck's going on, that think. And then you learn from people that do know what's up, and then you become one of them. I agree. You know, and basically how it okay. goes. Okay. What is your training split? Like, what days do you bench press, and how many times per week? I bench on Tuesdays and Fridays, except when I get close, and then I bench once a week. Okay. Um, other than that, I split body parts up. I kind of do the the, uh, the the one body part a day thing. So I'll do like, you know, uh, legs on Monday, legs. I consider one body part, you yeah. know what I mean? And plus I'm over fucking immediately. So I don't have to deal with them till next week. It's like a thing. Like, you know, <laughs> so I do legs on Monday. I do back in the morning on Tuesday and then I bench at night. Uh, Wednesday I do chest like bodybuilding work. Uh, Thursday I do shoulders. Friday I do arms and Saturday I bench. Okay. Okay, wow. cool. Prepping for your competition, what does competitions, what does your diet look like? I mean, I eat pre contest all year long. Okay. Otherwise I'll get um I'm, this isn't big for me right now. This is I'm like three to three hundred and ten pounds, you know, sometimes ninety five. It depends. Mm -hmm. Um and now my weight's down more because I had COVID pretty bad. I almost died. Heard that. Oh, wow. And it back my legs. So I have nerve damage. I, I know you guys know I got a bad right yeah. leg, so I don't have an ankle. Um, but the COVID attacked my good leg. Ooh. So my legs have lost like 15, 20 pounds of body weight. Whoa. Wow. I mean, they're dicks, but they're definitely not what right. they were. Um, it's cool because I can get my upper body up to like 350 pound body weight. And then have my legs the way they are. And I'm working the shit out of them. They're just not coming back. Um, and I could be like 300 to 310. So it's cool as far as the coefficiency now. Right. Okay. Gotcha. What type of music do you like to listen to when you train? I don't give a shit. I don't hear the Whatever. music. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> At your head. I, when I lift. When I lift, I don't even care about walkout music. I don't hear shit okay. anyway. Okay. I'd rather be silent. Really? Yeah, okay. Okay. At your heaviest body weight, what did you weigh, and how many meals per day and calories were you consuming? Um, the heaviest I've been is 390 pounds. Um, I was eating 12 calories plus a day, and uh, wow. I wanted to go 400. I looked. I was like, fuck. I'm like, I was 388. And uh, I'm going to go to 400, so I up my calories. And then, like, two days later, I woke up with this fucking headache. I thought I was going to have a stroke. So I go to the doctor, and they, like, ran every test in the world. And he's like, bro, your blood pressure is, like, 155 over 90, which is high. And you need to get on fucking – you need to lose weight. So then I was like, fuck, because I really wanted to hit 400 <laughs> pounds. Yeah. But, um, but it didn't happen. So the heaviest I've ever been was 388 pounds. Wow. Oh. Okay. What's he? No, when I started my diet back then, I was eating five pounds of red meat a day. Um, I was 7,000 calories a weight gainer a day. Um, 40 egg whites. I still do 40 a day. Um, tons of pasta, tons of rice, vegetables, um, you know, and then shit here and there. Because back in the day, I wanted to whatever I could do. So pizzas, whatever, yeah. you know, but now, now I'm like a pre-contest bodybuilder year round. Mm -hmm. My food is of either a white Japanese sweet potato or brown rice, uh, a protein vegetables, um, cilantro and tomato in my little mix. And then I'll put like salsa in it or I'll put teriyaki sauce or, I mean, I don't, I don't need to be that clean on my sodium. Right, you know what I mean? Right. But I, I always have a batch of shit with me all day long. Nice. And I drink, uh, you know, the Costco egg whites and the blue, blue. Yep, we have them. We have them upstairs. 
Yeah, I drink, I drink four of those a day. Wow. wow. Jesus. Like so high pro um, mild carbohydrates. And uh, it depends if I want to get big at nighttime. Or if I want to get big, I'll have carbs at night. Okay. Uh, you know. Okay. Kind of leads us into the next question. What's your favorite cheat treat meal? <laughs> <laughs> You know, honestly, I don't look at food as like reward anymore. You know, I've eaten it so long. It's like you look at a Lamborghini; it doesn't give a fuck of its cherry flavor or <laughs> chocolate. You just it up and go. So I really don't have a favorite food. I like sushi. Mm -hmm. You know, I like sushi. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I'm. My life is so structured and so programmed that. Like enjoyment really isn't enjoyment for me anymore. You guys got to understand that, you know, you want to be a bad motherfucker. You need to sacrifice so much in life and, and you need to want this shit bad. I'm 52 years old. I'm going to fucking hit a 1200 pound bench. Fuck all you motherfuckers. And the reason is, is because I work harder. I want it more. I want it more right now than I ever have in my life. And, you know, a lot of it has to do and it's not proving it to you, motherfuckers. It's all about mm -hmm. me. I don't give a shit. Everybody's like, oh, Mendy, you got your ego. You need to stop lifting. All you fucking punks on YouTube. Go fuck your mother. <laughs> Bottom line, here's what I think. You do you do what you do. You don't see me online going, oh, Roger Lindsay, you're a real dick. You shouldn't ride your bike around so much. <laughs> it's like, dude, fuck up. Let me be. You know, and if you don't like it, Fuck off my yeah, feet. I agree. Yeah, for real. I know. I, you're all listening right now. You little motherfuckers. And then I look and it's like no followers. It's like, oh, hiding behind the fucking iron curtain. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'm not even going to ask it as have you. I know you've had injuries. So um, what's the worst injury I mean, that what? Never. I've never what was that i've never been injured before um I, didn't you have like a crate I, I, i've seen this <laughs> like, <laughs> well, like that's why i'm not even gonna because usually i ask have you suffered like what? From... Watch, watch it watch it look at me i've never been injured okay <laughs> you want me to move to the next question next then? question please <laughs> <laughs> all right what does it matter what my fucking injuries are you guys know i'm all yeah. fucked up well if you don't want to tell you know? us your injuries you don't have to you're invincible. We'll move I'm, to the next question. I'm permanently handicapped. I'm three inches shorter on my right leg. That's why I wear that boot, you know, out. But you know what, dude? What do I want to be some fucking idiot at a coffee table going, you know, I could have been a contender. <laughs> uh, you know, I could have been the baddest motherfucker in the world. Uh, you know, shit. I get up every morning dying in fucking pain. I hit that shower. I go in 52. I come out 35. I like that. All right. Outside of the gym, what do you like to do? You, I mean, I know you make sacrifices, so do you have any hobbies and things you like to do outside of the gym? I like cars and motorcycles. Okay. okay. What's your favorite mo? I like, oh, hold, hold Sorry. I'm not done. <laughs> I like movies. What kind of movies? I love, um, I don't know, good okay. ones. I like all, you know, I just, you know, really, you know, this, this shutdown, I, I've watched every fucking series there is on Prime, on Netflix, on fucking Hulu. I don't know. I'm a real, uh, you know, I love, I love being entertained without me doing anything. There's something cool about that. For sure. You know? Have you watched Cobra Kai the whole season? Bro, I've watched yeah, all of yeah. them, bro. Are you kidding me? That fuck. Hey, that those motherfuckers were like dumpster diving before that, bro. Like God gave those guys, those two guys, a break, bro. Gave them money, right? Man. Yeah, you know I what you. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but good, bro. I really liked it. I think I think it was a fucking great yeah, idea. Same here. Oh yeah, yeah, I think they did a great job yeah. with it. You see that new thing with uh, Josh Jahamal or whatever his name is with that Jupiter thing? I have not, Scott. No. 
Yeah, it's really good. Check it out. Okay, Netflix. Uh... Okay, yeah, Netflix. Okay. Uh, you done? Can I move to the next question? Okay. I'm done. <laughs> okay. What? Oh, and I, I love women. Okay. What was that? I love women. women. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I really love them a lot. You know, I don't really have a type. Um, if it turns me on, I'm into it. I like that. Fair enough. Sounds good. You know, um, and now okay. we can move on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is your favorite moment in your powerlifting career? Fuck, I don't know. There's been so many great moments. It can be moments. You can give us top three. It was that, that time at the Arnold in like 2001 or two. When me and Canelli were just going lift for fucking lift. Oh, yeah. And four lifts a piece. Um, and then he had to go after me. So I was like, fuck, I didn't know if I hit enough, you know. But I won that yep. one. Um, no, that, that was a great. I, I've had a lot of great moments with I you, know. Ryan. I mean, honestly, you made my fucking, I mean, dude. I, I would think about, I mean, Gene was cool and shit, but, and I know he's dead. I'm not trying to talk right. shit about him or nothing, but he didn't do it for me, bro. It was like, you fucking me, bro. Like, dude, I would go to sleep thinking of fucking you up, and I would wait thinking about fucking uh, you up. Just like the way, you, I you know, know what I mean? Scott, yeah. <laughs> like, it was like me and you were so honed in together. Yeah. I hope to God you can get your shit together in, in fucking July, because, dude, I, I I don't give a fuck what happens. I just want to be on that platform with my brother and just have one more fucking moment together. Pull your goddamn shit together, bro, because I I'm need trying, you. I'm trying, Scott. I'm trying. Every day, I'm trying. Did you want to? I love you. <laughs> in the most masculine I know, way possible. Of course. Of course. Making up some shit. Oh, Ryan did a pass on fucking, blah, 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 blah. you know. No, no. This motherfucker that I'm interviewing with right now is such a fucking prime example of excellence that I can't tell you people. Ryan Canelli is a bad motherfucker. And you know what he said to me? I'm saying to him, he drove me to where, bro, you know what? I'll never forget it. One time, we're sitting in the back, and I'm pumped. And you can ask Ryan. I don't even fucking talk to nope. motherfuckers when I compete. I'm like, I'm like out of my fucking mind. I'm like a serial killer all canned up, you know? And I'm sitting there, and I'm focused, and I'm just ready. And fucking Ryan looks up, and he goes, Hey, you know what? Ten years when we're dead, this is going to be the best moment of our life. I will never fucking forget that. I bro. said that too. It broke, it broke my fucking concentration <laughs> and I was fucking on fire laughing. <laughs> I was like the best one I ever heard in my fucking life. Half, half the time, <laughs> Scott, I don't know what's going to come out of these chops, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but that was so classic. In 10 years, when we're all dead, this is going to be the best moment of our lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was a while ago, too. That was a long time ago when I said that. Yeah. Everything was a I while know. ago. Yeah. Shit. <sighs> you ready for the next question? What was that? Like it's cutting out a little. One more time, Scott. Next, next question. question. What do we got? What is your least favorite or worst moment in your powerlifting career? Well, probably a couple weeks ago when I dropped 1121 on my fucking chest. That could probably be yeah. one yeah. of Yeah. You know, that's an interesting story. You know, Tiny had a deadlift platform underneath the bench. So I asked him to make some risers because I got a bunch of little hobbits that fucking lift me off. They're little right. short guys, but they're badass. So he goes, yeah, yeah, no problem. Well, we didn't fucking think about the platform under there. So when the show started, the risers could only go to the edge of the deadlift platform. So they were like this, handing me fucking 1,100 oh, pounds. God. So... I opened with 1052, which was easy, but I couldn't get a handoff. And it was just, I was all over the place, you know? So uh, my guy, Kruger Shirts, Rob Farrell, 
best fucking shirt ever made on the whole fucking planet. And I will fucking kill a motherfucker for this dude. He's the baddest motherfucker around. I love you, Rob. I asked Rob because he was there. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what to fucking do, bro. I need to break this fucking mm-hmm. record. So I look 1121 on and Rob's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. No problem. So we get out to the platform and I hear Rob go, oh, yeah, give him a two count. And my, my, my lift off guy's like, all right, whatever, you know. So we lift it off. And it comes out to me, and I'm, like, holding it, and they're, like, one, two, and then they just dropped oh, it. Oh, shit. So the weight came down, and I caught it, like, on the edge of my palm, and then it just slipped and free fell onto my chest. Oh. And I was so fucking pissed, you know, before, because I couldn't get the two lifts in the beginning. I was like, dude, like, what the fuck is going on when I'm in? That literally, I was so fucking mad when it fell out of my fucking hands that I was just like, when I get up, I'm fucking going nuts. And it, boom, hits me. And I was so tight that I didn't even feel that bar hit Jesus, me. man. I didn't feel it. They get it off me, and I get up, and I look at Rob, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? Oh. And, dude, <laughs> he couldn't even look at me in the face. He kind of looked down, and he goes, we fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing. And I was like, I mean, what do you say? I was like, oh, okay. So I walked away, and I, <laughs> I wasn't even mad like that. It was like he totally calmed me down. It was like not even an argument. I was like, all right, well, shit happens. Let's Holy move on. shit, Scott. So, so anyway, I needed to get a check from them, right? So I left, and I didn't even think about it because I was all fucking discombobulated. So I get a call, and they're like, oh, yeah, we owe you a check. You know, we're having an after party. Come by. And I was like, all right, cool. So we all go by there, and I, I walk in, and like, everybody's looking at me fucking weird, you know? And I'm like, well, what's going on here? Because I'm not even thinking, you know? I'm just fucking still tripping, you know? So I walk up, and Mark Chalet and Fred Fisher and all of them are sitting there. And I'm like, hey, guys, I'm sorry I walked out. And, uh, you know, can I get my check? And, like, everybody's just, like, stopped. And they're just like... And it's silent. And I'm like, what the fuck is everybody looking at me weird for? And Mark L.A. looks up and he goes, how are you not fucking dead right now? <laughs> how the fuck are you here, standing here, like, talking to us? They go, bro, you, you are you fucked up? You got a bruise? And I am I like lift my shirt up and I'm like, no, nah, nothing, holy bro. Proof. You know? And I was like, and they're like, holy fuck. Nothing's wrong? And I was like, no, nah, I didn't even fucking feel it, bro. And I'm like, can I have my check? <laughs> <laughs> uh, classic. So, yeah, I think that was probably the worst moment okay. I had. And tearing That wasn't too right. happy either. Tearing the peck. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, name some of your greatest feats of strength in training or on the platform. In the gym, I hit 875 raw, um, or excuse me, 785 raw. You know, back in the day, the whole raw thing is like huge yeah. now. But back in the day, it was all about equipment, and nobody was lifting right. raw. So James Henderson hit 711. So I was like, fuck. I was hitting 735 doubles at the in the gym, um, getting ready for a meet. And back in the day... We would train raw all the way until 30 days out. And then we would go into a shirt and then we would lift. So, you know, the shirt never really got seated. Like you really didn't really feel at one with the shirt like you do today. So, you know, everybody was like, fuck, well, why don't you fucking break James Henderson's record? And I was like, all right. So I went up to San Francisco um, and John Ford was there. He was my old liftoff guy. And uh, I, I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to break the 700 pound barrier because no one had ever done it except James, you know? So I opened with 665 or 661, slammed it. And then I went 701, slammed it. And then I walked off the platform to like leave the mystery of like, oh, fuck, you know what I mean? Hmm. So I did that. And then uh, in Massachusetts, they had some other freaking meat. I don't even remember the meat's names. I've done so many of them. But uh, then I hit the 715 yep. there. Yep. You know, so I hit 713 first, then I hit 715. 
And then I was fucking killing it in the fucking gym. And I hit a 785 and my ex-wife, she's like, you know what? You need to do a fucking raw meat and, and just get that 785 on the board. And I was like, baby, why? Nobody gives a fuck. Who cares. So that's why I never put it on the board. And you know what, Mars, you were fucking right, baby. I should have done it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Done it. You know, should have, could have. That's yeah. how it is, yeah. you know. But, uh, you know, what else? I squatted a thousand, but I didn't give a fuck about that. Uh, you did some pretty heavy board pressing in the gym. I mean, I mean, back in the day, I remember yeah. you used to go 1,200, like, uh, all the time. You... <clears throat> yeah. I mean, but fucking deal. What's that? I did 1,205 a yeah. week ago. I mean, what's, what's that matter? You know, I don't know. I mean, if you consider that a feat it of is. strength. And, I mean, unless you touch for me, I mean, and then I was going to touch the next week, and then my nervous system went right. dead, which I was playing, trying to kill it out. For all of you that don't know, <clears throat> you ever have, like, the best workout of your life? And then for a month after that, you're just like dragging. You're like, what the yes, fuck, sir. you know? Because your central nervous system conks out. So your central nervous system runs your muscular system. So you could be strong as hell. And your nervous system, is only, it's like a battery. It's only going to take so much and then it dies. And it needs to recharge. So when you recharge it, you're 30, 40 pounds stronger every time you do it. So I'm conked out right now. I'm only working with like 1,000 right now. Um, but in about three weeks, um, some serious shit's going to kick right. in. So by the time I hit fucking Pennsylvania, there's a fucking storm mm -hmm. coming. So all I got is fucking I, I hear you. I don't know. That 1205 did not look it, bad. It, after I saw it. You know, it's weird. The new shirt, it's so much speed out of the bottom that I haven't fucking acclimated my brain to that speed. So it's just like, Root! and then I'm stuck. I'm like, fuck, and then I got to grind. But, you know, working in this shirt more and more, now I'm going to get used to that speed to where I could just Root! just drive it all the way through in one shot. Yeah, I noticed in your you video, I mean? Scott, that Pharrell shirt with the black and blue material. Uh, pretty impressive looking shirt. I, I, I just sent one back to uh, Rob, and I'm half tempted to call him up and ask for the same shirt you're wearing, Scott, because it, it looks really good. I mean, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. So He's got a new one that's red and black, black shirt and with a red uh, grid I've seen stitch. That. Yeah, I'm going to call him up and ask him for one of those. Rob, I know you're watching right now. So uh, <laughs> I'll be calling him in a minute. And I like how he's, like, snug the arms up also. That's another so – my, my arms are still open. Yeah, it's, a lot of my yeah. shirts are snug at the end, but as I go up to, towards the armpit, it really opens up. There's a lot of extra gap there. And I noticed yours. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, now he's, he wasn't doing it before. Now he's doing measurements. Before it was just like there was a large, right. an extra large, a 2X, whatever. You know, now he's customizing. I just had one of my guys have it done. Dude, I'm telling you, Rob Farrell has revolutionized the, the shirt. Um. And, you know, everybody's like, oh, fuck, how are you switching over? And blah, blah, blah. Dude, I've done everything you could fucking do in a regular fucking right. shirt. Like, what the fuck else is there? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, um, I, I it, it's like, dude, I'm not I'm not trying to, like, cheat or do anything like that. It's just like, fuck, if somebody's got an idea that's better, then why wouldn't you fucking go to it? It's called a quip with fucking lifting, moron. Like everybody's like, oh yeah, it's fucking, you know, you're putting a hydraulic jack on you and blah, 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 blah. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. So I am take fucking 1200 pounds with the same fucking shirt. And let's see if you fucking don't snap in three fucking pieces. <laughs> yeah. You know, I love technology. Same here. Dude, I'm the baddest motherfucker ever on a bench press in the fucking world. And I'll tell you right now, all you motherfuckers out there, try fucking equipment. All right? Tell me you don't get a fucking boner. <laughs> oh, bro, fucking boo, boo, natty, fucking da, da 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 Bro, let me tell you something about steroids, too, and I'm going to get into this topic. Okay. All right? A motherfucker does steroids, and I'm not pro-drug. I'm not anti-drug. You're a man. You're a woman. You make up your own choice. But when a motherfucker takes steroids... A real motherfucker, not no fucking high school idiot. 
they work 10 times harder than anybody that's not on True. it. Focus, everything is a whole different fucking world. Okay? So before you open your fucking mouth, like all you fucking idiot. And dude, the internet, I have seen the stupidest motherfuckers on the oh, internet. Same here, Scott. I'm like, dude, do you, can you breathe without assistance? It's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you don't like it? fucking feed. You know, it's like, go to fucking, you know, RC fucking trucks. Go somewhere else. You know what I mean? You know, but you know, look, whether you're on steroids or you're not, the bottom line is a dude on steroids should not be at a fucking natural show. I agree. Exactly. And a natural dude, if he's stupid, then he'll go to a fucking steroid show. <laughs> I mean, period. That's right. the way it is. Now, I am not saying that I take steroids. Correct. Right. Next, Next question. question. Got it. I bet there's like 800 more questions now that I just uh, in, in the chat box, Scott, we're going to be there a while. Well, and that's there's a ton of cool. questions, but we'll get there <laughs> sooner than later. <laughs> I put a couple hours aside for you tonight. You <laughs> when you first started out, what lifters did you look up to? Did you have anybody that inspired you? No. I had a feeling you were going to say that. Okay. Are you ready for the next question then? No. You know what? Give me five minutes. I'm going to go powder up. I'll be right back. Powder up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Don't the, don't the, they look, I'm going to powder my, yeah, okay. you know, whatever. Just yeah, okay. next question. Okay. We're moving on. <laughs> no, not that powder up. I don't do That's that That's what shit. I was thinking. <laughs> my mind went somewhere else, Scott. It went uh, in, into I the gutter. Go there. <laughs> yeah. What are your favorite accessory exercises for bench? I love board pressing. Um, I love close grip tricep. Um, I love, well, you know, here's the thing that I don't really know if I have a favorite, you know, I was a bodybuilder before I was a, a, a power lifter and you know, accessory work or bodybuilding has always been a favorite of mine. I mean, as I've told everybody before, I'm, I'm a straight up, I'm not a closet case bodybuilder. I'm a bodybuilder. Everybody in the fucking world knows it. So I train like a bodybuilder through and through, except in my compound, in my compound movement. So, you know, the bodybuilding exercises are basically what has kept me around to what I'm doing today. And the older I get, the harder I have to train. Um, you know, I've blown my quads twice benching. So I know that I need to have incredibly strong mm -hmm. legs. Um, you pull from your back. I mean, your back is so involved in a, in a heavy bench press that you need that. You need big strong triceps you need to have good hips you need to have good glutes um you need to have good abs you need you know i mean basically my bench routine is a squat laying down hmm. i mean that's basically what it right. is um, you know i don't bench from here i bench from here my bench derives from my right. hip um so you know all my main power, you know, I always tell my guys, my, my favorite analogy when I teach people is like, you know, the, um, the tidal wave that hit Thailand yes. a few years back and like wasted Thailand, yeah. right? Well, do you know how big the wave was? Not exactly. No. Nine feet. That's it. Okay. It was a nine foot wave. So the wave that crashed on the Thailand was not really what did the damage. It was all the ocean behind it that came in and crushed Thailand. You know, if you have trillions and trillions of gallons behind the nine-foot wave, the fucking wave doesn't mean a fucking thing. You yeah, know what I mean? Sense. So when I teach my guys, my whole body 
is the ocean. This is the wave. So, you know, what happens in your arms, as long as your technique is correct, is really minimal compared to the effect of the rest of your body. Yeah, yes, sir. You know, so, you know, people, they, they have to understand, like, oh, it's just a fucking bencher. Dude, if you fucking benched the way you're supposed to bench, you know, like Julius Maddox, right? I fucking love the guy. What a great personality yeah. he has. He's just, I've never met the guy. I've never talked to him except online a couple of times. I think he's fucking yeah. awesome. He's going to hit 800. Um, but his form is atrocious. He's just that fucking big and yeah. strong. You know, if I worked with that dude, bro, he'd be hitting 850. I agree, Scott. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know. And Julius, I love you, bro. And I, I'm a fucking fan, bro, 100%. Definitely. So I'm not talking shit about you. Um, and I respect what you do. And um, I think you're a great ambassador for it. And uh, I'm just happy to, to you know, uh, to be able to witness the 800. Because I know you're going to hit oh, yeah. the 800. Definitely. Um, but beyond that, I think you're going to hurt yourself. Because... You know, everything you do, you need to pay at the cash register. For. Yeah. And you ain't going in with a full deck. You're just a fucking hulking, massive, talented, incredible guy. Um, but that only brings you so far. So, you know my number. I'm here for you, brother. You let me know. I would be honored to bring you to that next goal. Because I think 800 is going to come in yeah. a minute. But I really also already be thinking about 850. Damn. And I just want to give Julius Maddox his moment because he deserves it. And, uh, I love the guy. So, All right. Next okay. question. What is your favorite, most fun meet that you've ever done? Why do you keep asking? I can't remember what I fucking asked. <laughs> like, you know, like, what the fuck? I, I mean, can stop. I can start deleting some of these questions. Like, I can start skipping them. <laughs> you know what? I've done, I don't know, two or 300 meets. I just, I don't know. You know what's crazy is like, like I used to be a trophy guy. Like, I was, yeah, I'm going to fucking win that trophy. And I'm going to win that trophy. I threw like a whole fucking bedroom of trophies away. Cause it just got too much. I didn't have anywhere to fucking Same. put them. You know? It was like fucking, you know. And it's weird that I did that because you know I would have killed somebody if they would have like tilted a trophy back in the day. Because I worked so hard okay. for them. But but now, I, you know what? Honestly, I'll give the guy below me the fucking trophy unless, you know, cash. I'm I'm king on. I'm good yeah. with that. But the guy below me can have the trophy. Let him fucking win it. I don't even give a fuck about the meat. All I care about is world history. That's all I care about. You know, my whole goal in life was to where when I die, 50 years after I die, they'll still know the name Scott Mendelson. And I think I've done that. Oh, already. absolutely, Scott. Yeah. I, I think I've I think I've put that put that to sleep. Um, so I gotta come up with some new fucking goal now. But you know, to say what my favorite meat was, I, I dude, I have no so fucking like one idea. of your records that was your favorite. Sorry, seven fifteen, ten thirty one, Arnold Classic, Ukraine meat. No, I can skip. they were all fucking cool. They were all cool. I mean, you know, my thing is now. I think I'm going to like it a little bit better because now I'm hitting the numbers that I should have right. been hitting. And back in the day, it was like everything, you know, especially with the other shirt, like all the stars have to align completely correct or you're not having That's the day. Right. You know, your liftoff guy fucks up. Uh, they, I mean, dude, I mean, I had the perfect day one time and I took 1126 down and I was like, yeah, because I was slamming 1150 every fucking workout. 
And then I bring it to the bottom, and the fucking wrap on my right arm goes, <laughs> and comes undone. I'm just like, thank you, God. It ain't my day again, you know? I don't really know what my favorite thing is. My favorite thing is everything that I've done to make all you people out there happy. Everything I've done to satisfy myself. You know, everything I've done to where you people call me and and thank me for doing what I do. That's my favorite thing. Good answer. Okay. Ready for the next question? or Just shoot me. And I feel like you're going to like hate all the next questions. So just if you don't want to answer one, you don't have to. But the next one is what is something about you that would surprise everyone? <laughs> it's all out there, guys. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's what you get. There ain't nothing hidden on I this see that. I'll tell you that <laughs> Um, fuck, I don't know. Huh? I think you guys pretty much know everything yeah, about we me. Do. Okay. No secrets. Communication is not one of my flaws. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think will be the future of the sport? I mean, I think Julius is now the future of this next yep. era. Um, I think I'm the future of the sport right now. I like that. I thought you might say that. <laughs> Ready for the next one? And you know what? I don't mean to sound conceited like I think I'm the fucking, you know, best in the whole fucking world, but I do think I'm the best in the whole fucking right. world. That's confidence, sir. All right. But I'm not conceited. Right. Right. I'm not about medals that I'm the best in the whole fucking world. I mean, you put me on the spot, and I'm going to tell your ass, yeah, fuck mm-hmm. yeah. No? Okay. But I think, you know, like in the shirted realm, um, um, dude, I just fucking worked out. I just fucking benched. Um, Carlino. Tony, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's fucking amazing. He's young. Um, yeah, Colby is fucking outrageously yep. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Will yep. Barati, amazing. Um, you know, when Tony first started lifting, he hired me to train him. He, I remember he said that. Yeah. I'm not taking any credit for like I made Tony because I right. didn't. But it's it's to see him where he is today. It's it, it's a special thing for me. Mm-hmm. You know, to to have a guy that's like on top of the world now that was like a kid asking me to help him out. You know, it's just like, I don't I just, I got a fucking soft spot for Tony. I fucking love him. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And Jimmy, I love him too. I don't have the history, you know, with Jimmy, like I do with Tony, but you know, he's a fucking all-star, mm-hmm. you know, I think if he gets any heavier, he's going to fucking pop, <laughs> but dude, he was fucking thick as fuck, bro. But, uh, you know, I, I think they're, those guys are the future. Um, you know, and I think they're great men and great athletes. Um, I think they're good ambassadors for the Same sport. Here. Definitely. Definitely. If you had the opportunity to go back and do it all over again, would you change anything? If so, what would it be? I'd hit that 785 yep. raw. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I, you know, but it, I, I hate the fact that my pec tore because I would love to be doing the raw thing with these guys right now. There's so many strong motherfuckers out there right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I wish I'd be there every time I watch these guys, and I watch them all close. Like that one cat just broke my 701 uh, world record. I can't remember. No bad day to do an interview, bro. After I fucking bench, I'm like, oh man, between my ears. <laughs> but I guy hit 705. He broke my 701. I had that world record for over 20. Wow. So, yeah. Was that even this 15? I had forever and until Spoto came to me. You know, we started training and he took it all the way. So, yeah. you know. Okay. 
where do you see yourself in 10 years? Where do I see myself in 10 years? Yeah. I don't know. Break world records at a lighter weight and bask under a palm tree on vacation. Finally, <laughs> I plan on actually taking my first vacation of my life soon. I don't know when it's going to be. Because, you know, when you compete, you know, we travel all over the world and we compete, but not one time was it a fucking vacation. True. So it's like fucking yeah. work. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Did you see that? No. no. Did you see that? No. Did you see that? It's like, fuck, yeah, but I've been to Germany. I've been to Africa. I've been to Ukraine. I've been here. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know, I I don't know how to relax, Um, but I plan on learning. I'm going to find somebody that can teach me, you know, Um, and I, and I want to be on a vacation in 10 years. Okay. Good answer. What advice can you offer new offer new lifters that are just starting out? Well, first of all, this generation of all these new lifters, they all have their fucking heads up their ass and they don't want to work hard and they think everything's entitled to them. And, you know, the work ethic of today is bullshit. True. Totally, totally agree. Um, I believe that... Now, that's not counting, you know, your handful of fucking people. Right. But overall, dude, like when I was a kid, we'd sit around and talk about moms. You know what I mean? Your mom, and, you know, this, your mom's that. Uh, and it was like, dude, we're just joking. Now it's like motherfuckers are going into schools and killing people oh, over yeah. it. Or, you know, it's hurting my feelings. I can't take it. And I'm going to sue you and all this shit. It's like, dude, what the fuck happened to good old having fucking fun and just talking shit. You know? Your mom walks down the street with a mattress on her back with a sign that says overflow to the left. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, different shit. Just, and it was, yeah, it was horrible, you know, and nobody meant anything towards our moms or nothing, but, but it was fucking funny. And those were great times where you could just think about it. And dude, you don't hear about nobody doing that shit nope. no more. Okay. Just regular shit. Dude, I swear to God, I think the fucking internet is just taking everybody's brain over. And, you know, I don't give a fuck if you're a Republican or you're a Democrat. Just be a fucking normal human being, bro. You know? Definitely. But I don't want to get into that yeah. either. Right. So. <laughs> Fair enough. If you could only ever use one accessory movement for bench press, what would what would it be? Next question. That's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know. I don't really want to ask questions anymore. I don't like our questions. I'm like, well, done. Well, these, are, these are good ones. Coming okay. up are good ones here. The, this one? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Because they're important. <laughs> How important are training partners? Very important. You know, um, I have a, a liftoff guy and he's super busy and he lives like an hour and a half away from me. So there was a point where, you know, he just couldn't fucking come and I got it. But, you know, when you get reliant on somebody or some people and they're not there, you can't fucking train, especially when we're doing weights that what we're doing. It's not like, you know, any fucking four people could come in and be like, Oh yeah, I'm going 1100. What are you guys doing today? Can you help out? I mean, it just doesn't work. Very, very important. <laughs> Have you ever gone into the gym on a heavy bench day, mentally ready, but the body or CNS says otherwise? And what do you do? Well, there are times when I work out and I ain't feeling it. So you know what I do? I leave. Right. You know, you got to listen to your body. And if your body's not feeling it that day. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's good advice. Are naps or power naps during the day an essential part of your training and recovery? You know what? Some of the best sleep that I ever get is a 20-minute power nap. Oh. Wake up all sweaty. You know? It's crazy. I mean, I don't 
sleep particularly well. Um, I bought this mattress online. You guys have probably seen it online. It's called Eight E I G H T. Okay. And basically, um, it's got copper in it, and it's 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 a, a memory foam mattress, and water goes through it. Whoa. And basically, it's dual zone, and it's got an app on the phone, and it tells you a sleep report every night. It tells you how long it took you to fall asleep how long you slept for, how long you were in REM, how many tosses and turns you had. Um, It's fucking incredible. It cost me like five grand, but dude, changed my ass up. And like, I'll have it set to where I'll get in the bed and the mattress will be at 55 degrees. Oh, wow. Old and crisp. You know how you like getting in a cold, crisp bed? You know what I mean? Fucking unbelievable. And then you set it throughout the night. At first, I was like, fuck, the cold's so cool. And then I would wake up at like two in the morning, freezing my ass off. You know what I mean? Um, but I sweat a lot in Same bed. Here. It's like, fuck, dude. I mean, sometimes, especially when I'm getting ready to compete, dude, I'll wake up. The whole fucking mattress is soaked. Right, man. So if the mattress is cold, then you don't sweat. Makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Cool. So, but you could set it at different intervals throughout the night to where when you wake up in the morning, it's like warm because, you know, being like our age especially like if you're in cold for a long period of time you get stiff you know what i mean throughout the night you set it at like you know whatever like i have it at like minus eight minus ten is the max so i'll do minus eight and then i'll do minus five and then i'll do like plus two and plus three so when i get up uh it like warms up to you you know what i mean it's fucking awesome that sounds really cool Right, it'll change your life. I might look into that. Uh, it's really the most important. I mean, the, that pyramid, you know, eating, sleeping, training. You know, we can eat all we want, train all we want, but if you're not getting proper sleep, you know, that's a big factor. Dude. Game changer, Game changer, bro. Yeah, I've never heard of that mattress yep. before, I but I'll Google it when it's all over. Yeah, and I'll, just let me know because I'm, I'm in with them. I'll send you hundred bucks. Oh, cool, them. cool. I don't get it. That's yep, they ask, they ask me if I'm online. But... Cool. All right, right here. Yeah. What gear do you use? Band shirt, wrist wraps, etc. I mean, I use the Pharrell band shirt. Um, I like the Overkill wrist wraps because they're really fucking good. The yes, white I ones. Have those too. Yeah, those fucking work gnarly. I mean, those are pretty fucking crazy. So I use those. I have an Inja belt. I use a thick belt yeah. um, for the Inja belt. Um, and then I like wearing boots right. when I bench. Um, and the reason is, is because when you wear a tennis shoe, your foot's flexing and everything. So you really aren't getting a hundred percent drive off right. of it because you're driving your foot. You know what I mean? But when I have a boot on and I like steel toes because they're rigid. And then when I drive off my foot, I'm not using my foot. I'm, I'm using my right. legs, so I'm driving all the way off of my legs, and I get a lot more drive out of it. Yep. What's next for Scott Mendelson? Okay. July 18th, Pennsylvania. Nice. All right, that's coming right up. And I will be ready, and I plan on not dropping it yes, this sir. time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's hard. To, every time I watch, I'm like, oh, God, cringe. Hey, let me tell you something. When it happened, it was fucking wild. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> oh. How I walked out of it, dude, I'm not going to tell you, oh, I'm a bad motherfucker, and, you know, it's da-da-da. that was straight God. Yeah. yeah. Period. That is a... I don't know how I don't either. That oh. that. I don't either. It looked... Very it's gnarly. scary. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered, like your legacy? As the greatest fucking venture of my era. Because I know in the future eras, there's going to be guys that are gnarlier because equipment's going to yep. get better and so forth. And so forth. Mm-hmm. But I want to be remembered as one of the greatest pioneers. Um, you know, that lived his life for the bench that gave his all and everything he had for the sport. Cool. 
where can people find you? Like, do you have a website, social media? What's what's the best way? Um, uh, you can email me at mendysgym at gmail.com. Um, we're at Mendy's Gym, 6371 Van Nuys Boulevard in Van Nuys, California, 9401. Um, I do online training. I train guys all over the right. world. And then, you know, I train in the gym. We have a team and, you know, I've, uh, this is my life. You know, I don't have a social life. My gym, my clients, my team, that's my social life. So, you know, I don't go out rarely. Um, I eat out once a week, like sushi. Same here. Come join me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well scott we have one question left one last question simple um would you like to give a shout out to any of your sponsors kruger shirts highly incredible uh germinator it's a product that's a uh, cleaning solution that's chemical free and kills everything off and it's great i use it at the gym um mendy's gym and a nutrition and uh and overkill as well i'm not using it now but i will again and rudy i love you and i love all the support you've given me uh and i will be benching in a regular shirt soon. oh wow nice okay cool you know, he's there you know whatever i need he's there for me and uh you know i i respect rudy rosales he's a he's a great ambassador for the sport and he to it as well and i really like you know um what he's done he helped me quite a bit i think that's about okay. it well scott we're going to move over to the chat box and we have quite a few questions we'll try to get through these quick so we don't keep you here all night um uh, we'll have ash so we have a- okay <laughs> uh <laughs> remy shirley has a question for you hey okay. hey scott when when do you plan on going back to arm wrestling? Can you please give Eric Spoto a pull? I can't. Actually, I spoke to Eric about a week ago. Uh, we're tight. Okay. And uh, I will be going back to arm wrestling. I'm already pulling right now a little bit. But um, I'm... Uh, oh, and arm wrestling apparel, they're also one of my sponsors. I want to put the shout out to them. But I will be going back uh, into arm wrestling shortly in a competition. Nice. Cool. Uh, Remy Shirley has another question here. When you pulled your chest on your 716 world record attempt, how crushed were you after that? Do you ever wish you didn't go for it and kept geared lifting your priority? No, I was crushed, but I was only crushed because it was my mistake that I, I ripped my chest. When I got the handoff, the guy on the left dropped yeah. it on me, and my elbow was out, and I needed to pull it in. And what I should have done, now that I think back, should have, could have, was I should have just racked it and had him relift it to me. Uh, but I didn't, and I paid the price. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. No. Perfect. Remy Shirley has another question. I like Remy okay. Shirley. <laughs> How strong was Rich Piana for a bodybuilder? Weak as fuck. Really? Oh. Uh, Shobit Jane. Hey, Scott. Feet kept in front versus feet tucked under in the bench press. Which, according to you, has the most advantage? I get more drive uh, when I tuck my feet back. Ryan would probably have a different on the whole matter <laughs> but uh, for me it works okay perfect chris smith has a question hey ryan have you or scott ever had any big calcification calcifications in your shoulders i had some in july the spurs caused rotator cuff tears i had a barbitage this january to remove the calcium but my delt it didn't have anything and it else didn't there. finish. Uh, as far as sh- it's still bugging me at benching, I don't know. That's what, never mind. Okay, calcifications, bone spurs, things of that nature. How are your oh. shoulders, Scott? 
My shoulder is fucking shot, but it has nothing to do with calcification. Right. Is it bone on bone in there at all, Scott? I mean, where are we at on shoulders? You know, my left shoulder, I hit a guy in the head with a hook when I was fighting, and uh, I broke a piece of bone off the head of my Whoa. humerus. So they did surgery on it, and now the head of the humerus is, like, sheared off almost. What? But what happens is the body um, tends to protect itself, so all the muscle in my shoulder has grown into the bone on my shoulder. Wow. Um, but it doesn't bother me. I mean, it hurts like hell all the time, but it, it doesn't bother me, Ben. Okay. No. okay. Yeah. Jerry Cool has a question. What do or did you do to come down from almost 400 to 300 with abs? Food, cardio, training, etc. I mean, when I was almost 400, I still had abs. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I, um, I, I tried to diet down like a normal person, um, and I couldn't lose muscle. So basically, I starved myself, and I lost 90 pounds in 16 weeks. Wow. wow. I was eating two times a day from 10 or 12 times a day. And I was doing three hours of cardio a day. Jesus. Yeah, it fucked up my blood sugar and, you know, but I needed to get the weight yeah. off. So I was, det- I walked around like I was starving all day long. Jerry Cool has a question. Can you talk about training in polys back in the day? Frequency, any specific tips? I'm still pretty new to gear. Polys. I mean, nobody even uses no. polys anymore. So, even though you're new to gear, you're in a cave as far as like what you're talking about. Call up Pharrell, get an F8, and get busy. I like that. Okay. Mr. Elite Entertainment has a question. How many times were you benching in a week when training for the Raw World Record bench? Twice. Twice. Okay. How did you ramp up? food without getting too fat you know um genetics has a lot to do with it i believe that you know if you're disposed to being a fat person then you're going to be fat um i think a lot of it has to do with myostatin levels i believe that um you know the less myostatin you have the more muscular you are agreed um and the more that you have the skinnier you are and the, the less muscular you are so i think a lot of it has to do with genetics um, a, a big portion of it is your food intake you know eating fucking big macs all day long you're gonna look like a big mac <laughs> uh, very cool how did you get your appetite up to be able to handle the amount of food when you were gaining weight Smaller, more frequent meals or three to five big meals? Um, I was eating like 12 times a day, all day long um, when I was eating weight. And a lot of it had to do with weight gainer. Um, but you have to train your body and your mind in order to eat properly. True. You know, you have dedication to eat when you're not hungry, um, to take calories in, to sacrifice, like I said. Look, the bottom line is you want to be the baddest motherfucker in the world. That means you need to suffer more than anybody else. Uh, period. period. That's a great quote right there, Scott. That's a good quote. The more the, 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 the more you want to succeed, the more you need to suffer. Very true. You know, the rest of the world is at parties and vacations and fucking fun and this. I don't do that shit. I can agree. I can relate, too. I mean, for many years, I lived uh, by myself alone. Had few, uh, no, I didn't go out. I, I eat, sl- slept, and trained, and yeah, that's all I did, man. But that's how you become number one, 110% into it, man. I believe you, bro, because I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jerry Cool has a question again. You've said for years about not being able to touch certain weights raw because of your specific form. Is it solely because of form or just years of injuries and being fucked up? Form. form. I could break form and touch 200 pounds if I wanted. But when you crank your shoulder blades together and your elbows are in, when you bench and you pull down, like your elbow does not go all the way to your right. back. It sticks sides. Right. And then you're pulling with your back. So, you know, 
no weight is going to touch until it's that exact amount of weight that's going to break that to, to, to get down to that that lowness in your where you can touch. Okay. Uh, Jerry, cool. This one here. Any funny or badass Rich Piana stories? He is how I found you back in the day. You know, I grew up with Rich, but we didn't hang out all the time. You know, we worked nightclubs. We did a, you know, I mean, there was time when, when we would work together and uh, like a big fight would kick off or something. And, you know, we would all be down and then I would like look over and Rich would just be like standing there. And I was like, what the fuck <laughs> are you doing? You know? And he was like, bro, bro, I'm not getting fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, was just, <clears throat> he was just, you know, not that kind of guy, but he looked like a fucking beast. You know right. what I mean? He wasn't, he wasn't into nothing. Rich was into making yeah. money. And he did it yes, quite sir. well. Remy Shirley has a question. Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> TMC TMZ is pretty stupid, but they had a post on you calling you the strongest Jew alive. Do you ever use that title? No, but I am. <laughs> uh oh, John Smith's got an interesting question. <laughs> Did Mendelssohn ever beat the bench monster on the platform? every time except once <laughs> and we're not going to get into that once are we We are not going to touch on that subject no sir <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i'm drawing a blank we're going to go to the next question <laughs> jerry cool yes. if you could go back to when you started competing and tell yourself anything any tips or whatever what would you tell yourself Repeat it again. I was still stuck on the last question. <laughs> if you could go back to when you started competing and tell yourself anything, any tips or whatever, what would you tell yourself? You know what? Honestly, I think I did it right because um, I always tell everybody I have another little thing. You know, when I started powerlifting, I hired J.M. Blakely to come from Ohio to my gym to teach me. And I, I, he was, you know, a world champion that was like this fucking guy. And I hired him and brought him from Ohio um, and gave him a job just to train me. Um, and, you know, I have this thing, you know, when I started training with him, I took my brain out and I put it on the shelf and I put a brand new dry kitchen sponge in so I could absorb everything. And I put my ego aside because I knew I was better than all these motherfuckers that I learned from. But if I would have been an egomaniac and been like, hey, fuck you, I'm better than you, they wouldn't have showed me shit. So I just fucking did the Yoda Luke Skywalker mm -hmm. thing. And I was like, yeah. you know, if he would have told me eat a pile of fucking dog shit, I would have nice. done it. <laughs> so. You know, um, I think I personally did it right because I wanted to be the best in the world and I was willing to do whatever I had to do to gain that knowledge. So I didn't care what they said to me, if they called me names, if they did this, if they talked shit. Uh, a lot of them held me back so they would win and I wouldn't. And my ex-wife was like, you know, the motherfucker's holding you back. You can smoke him right now. And I was like, shut the fuck up. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you don't understand. I don't care about beating him. I need what's in his brain. That knowledge that I need from him is priceless. And if I beat him, he's going to disappear and I'll never fucking see him again. So let him hold me down. Because once I learn and I get unleashed, then I'm going to be unfucking stoppable. And that's what happened. You ask Ryan, nobody knew who the fuck I was. And I just showed up at the Arnold and dominated everybody. 
I remember that meet too, because in the warm up area, you know, all the West Side guys and everybody was away over on this bench. And then and then the yep. Forza bench right here, it was you and some other guy. Uh, I don't know I don't know who it was, but I was like, I don't want to go away where the crowd's at. I'm gonna lift here. And I remember the first words I said to you, Scott. Uh I, I think you were at three plates, and I said, and I said, Can I get two plates real quick? And, and you looked at me and you said, Yeah, but you better hurry up. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. And I was like, oh, this guy's an asshole. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know who you were. <laughs> but I found out at the end of the day when you put up that 755, man, in that poly shirt, fucking badass lift, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't even Oh, <laughs> dude, it's, it's etched in my brain. But you know what? Actually, now I'll take it back. I think that was one of my favorite meets ever. Yeah, it was my first time there. It was your first time there, and hell yeah. Yep. And I was training just so I could fuck Glenn Shabbat up. I fucked that dude up so bad. He was there watching in the crowd, actually, yeah. And I was super jacked, and I saw him, and I was like, where the fuck are you? (laughs) And he, like, looked. I was like, I came here to beat your motherfucking ass. And he just, like, looked at me. And I was just, oh, dude, I was so fucking jacked, bro. I you were jacked, somebody. too. And what's funny, that 755, Scott, you had 30 more pounds in the tank. And I don't know what, if that oh, double poly you were wearing, man, it was f- fucking strong. Shit. Yeah. I'm ready to rumble oh, that Yes, day. sir. And I was fucking tripping. My arms cramped up on me before I went out because it was like the first big meet I ever did. And it was just, dude, it was packed that year. There was fucking oh, God. thousands of people. And dude, I fucking, I'm like, fuck, my arms are cramping out. And my fucking wife smacks me in the face and she goes, listen, motherfucker, we didn't come all the way across the fucking country for you not to fucking come home winning. She looks at me and she smacks me again. Look at me. And I look at her and she goes, go get me my motherfucking (laughs) check. And I was like. (laughs) (laughs) I like it. CJ Morgani. Scott, Long Island guy here, getting to the point where I want to try geared lifting, so I want to head to Shauna's gym. Can I expect her to have a similar personality to yours? Bro, you're in for a fucking (laughs) big-ass fucking surprise. That woman is me and a girl. (laughs) Whoa! (laughs) Let me tell you, Shauna Mendelson, she is... One fucking bad motherfucker, bro. <laughs> fucking joke. <laughs> I mean, dude, I seen her handle 870 pounds squat at 170 Damn. pounds. I seen her fucking bench 600. I seen her fucking pull over five. Yeah. I mean, she used to follow me wherever I fucking mm-hmm. went. And the year I won the Arnold with you, we were out eating. And um, Chris Taylor was there. And I was like, no, Shauna, you should fucking get into this shit. It's in our fucking blood. I could feel it. You could be a fucking world champion. And she's like, oh, come on. And I was like, dude, you need to fucking try it. And then Chris Taylor was right there. And he, he was in uh, at, uh, what was that gym that got fucking flooded at, at, over there in New York? What was it called again? Uh, uh, I'm trying to blank, Scott. I know, I know you know what I'm about, talking yeah. about. Anyway, I go, Chris, come here. And he comes over. He's like, yeah, what's up, Mandy? I go, this is my sister, Shauna Mendelson. I go, I want to hook you guys up. And that was it, bro. She took the fucking bit and ran, ran all the way home with nice. it. You know, she she did WPO last year. Very cool. Yeah, she's the real fucking deal. I'm proud of her. That woman, I love her to death. She's, uh, you know... We have other brothers and sisters, but, you know, she's really all I got. She's like, I don't know. It, 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 you know, the, the, the bond that I have with that woman is like, I mean, she's like me. She's part right. of me. She, you know what I mean? So it's like, see her go and, and then she opened up the gym and we have the same thing on both sides of the country and it's fucking amazing i love her i just i'm so happy that i'm her brother right on. very cool you know? nice so jonah i love you stop crying i know you're watching <laughs> all right <laughs> <laughs> that's 
They're very cool. Uh, Mr. Elite Mr. Elite Entertainment, Entertainment has a question for Scott. Scott, yeah. how do you feel about powerlifting still not being an Olympic sport? I remember this was something you discussed in the Power Un Power Unlimited documentary. Well, I mean, everybody wants their sport to be an Olympic sport, but you got to understand the IOC are like straight gangs. Um, once you give that sport over to them, there's no more making money on the outside. There's no more nothing, you know, is an IOC owned asset at that point. Um, there's different federations all over the world. And, you know, these guys are making a million bucks a year or whatever they're doing. And, you know, who's going to give up their livelihood? To, you know, because in order for an Olympic event, event to be an Olympic event, it has to be one unified federation. Um, and that's why powerlifting has never gone into it. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I don't, I don't see that happening in the future. Yeah, probably back over a million a year off of it. You know, a lot of these guys are, you know, the ATF, the IPA, you know, these are businesses. Um, so, yeah, there's your answer. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elite Entertainment has a second question. I remember Dave Hoff mentioning that you've benched 800 raw to a one board, squatted 1,000 for reps. Do you ever incorporate bands or chains into your programming? No. All I do is board presses. Okay. Um, chains and the bands are really hard on my joints for the upper. I believe in bands and chains. I mean, I would do bands um, for lighter exercises. Um, but as far as real heavy weight, because of the tension, your elbows, I don't believe in your shoulders, are not thick enough to handle like what your waist and your knees, and, you know, your hips and stuff can. So I limit myself and I only work boards. I don't do that. Okay. And I guess now because, you know, I started doing like Louis method mm -hmm. West Side back in the day. I couldn't even fucking pick milk, pick milk out of my refrigerator in the morning. I was fucking brutal, and I was in my 30s, and I was like, you know what? I'm fucking dying. How am I going to be when I'm old? I'm not even going to be able to right. move. So, you know, and then I was with the L.A. Lifting Club originally, and then, you know, like I said, everybody would train until 30 days out and then go into a shirt. So then I left the lifting club, and I had my own gym, and uh, I just formed a team there, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking work like four months straight in a shirt. And that's when I hit the 875 in Venice yep. Beach. Literally like 100 pounds ahead, 75 pounds ahead of the whole world. And on the way home from the meet, who did I call? Uh, I was eating my cereal in the morning, and as I was eating my Captain Crunch, the phone <laughs> rang. And he said, bro, I just took your record. <laughs> and I had to get on the internet, power thing watch, and there you are. Yep. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then... And asked me, I go, bro, well, for like a couple of months, like nobody was doing shit. And I was fucking bored. I wanted to have competition, you know? So I called up Ryan and I said, hey, bro, you want to fucking go to 900? Yeah. And he's like, hell yeah, I want to go to 900. Will you tell me what to do? And I said, hell yeah. And I told him the food oh, plan yeah. and the training. And he was like, no fucking way, bro. I ain't doing that. And I was like. Well, then you ain't coming up with me, bro, because I'm going ahead. And so he did what I asked him to, and there became the rivalry. That's when it started, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's when I was like, dude, I want him fucking pushing. It was, it's boring being it at is. the top when nobody is. You know, and you were who I thought of, bro, because I love you, I love brother. you too, man. Thank you. Uh, Remy Shirley here has a question. Was 800 raw capable in your prime? You yeah, I think it was. I was 15 pounds off. I just, uh, I mean, I hit 800 to board, to a one board Jesus. before. But, um, and it was, it went up. I had room. But, you know, you know, it's weird when times are the way they are and like, you got to understand, all you guys don't get it because Raw is so fucking big right now. Nobody gave a shit about Raw at all, period. 
it was geared lifting or go That's right. home. The next question. Raw Strength Society has a question. Would you ever go back to lifting in a multiply denim Enzer? I love multiply denim Enzer, but Enzer make a fucking shirt, right? Hold on, I gotta decline this okay. call. Alright, go ahead. Am I back? Uh, uh you'll come there, there you go, go, sir. Yeah, you're back now. I don't see oh, you. Oh you don't? Okay. Oh there we go. I got you. Little hiccup. Alright. I I love the denim. I hit eleven fifty in a fucking denim in the gym. I uh the problem with a denim was is they don't last long and they rip apart. Yeah, they too, yes. You know, I, I would love to have a denim right now, but John Enzer can't make a fucking shirt right to fucking save himself. I agree with you on that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I asked him to make me a shirt about a year and a half, two years ago, and they sent me a fucking trash bag. <laughs> Fuck, just bigger, nothing fucking fit right. I call him up, I go, what is this? They go, oh, we don't alter yeah. anymore. I was like, what? Well, fuck yep. you. I'm out. Same here, Scott. And it's fun. I, I literally helped that motherfucker develop his shit. I flew to Texas, like eight shirts out in one weekend, you know, was in with him, like fucking with my brother. Yep. Talked to him night after night, and the motherfucker wouldn't even make me a goddamn shirt now. Like, hey, fuck you. Yeah. Like, what kind of loyalty is that? True. You can suck my fucking little Jewish dick. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. But honestly, I put my fucking life into that company. All I cared about was Enzer. I mean, dude, every shirt you saw me in was True. an Enzer. A different every fucking time. I mean, dude, everybody knew about Enzer with yep. me. And like... Are you fucking kidding me? That's the fucking kind of uh, respect you give me? You can't even fucking do a good shirt? You know, because Hoff is, and I love Hoff. Hoff's yeah. my bro. You know, I helped, I helped him get to the thousand right. pound mark. Uh, but, you know, he makes great shirts for fucking Dave. He sure does. You know? Oh, he definitely does, but I don't understand why he won't make me a good fucking shirt. Yeah, things have changed with John Enzer, and uh, uh, other people have said so too that are... Yeah, and the Phenom's a good shirt. Yep. You know, the Den good. I mean, they were all fucking yep. good, bro. You know, but I just don't understand. Like, if somebody was with me and my company for fucking 15 years, dude, I would jump and be like, dude, what do you need? What can I do for you? Put your fucking life into my company? I mean, dude, Inzer wouldn't even be fucking Inzer if it That's wasn't true. for us. You know, I said it time and time again. If I was John Enzer and I was dealing with Scott Mendelson, I, I would want you to have the best shirt that's going to make you the best lifter in the world. Oh, it's dude, simple, fuck simple yeah. business. And I don't, I don't know what happened to that guy. He's kind of went downhill, but that's a different story. You know what? Hey, Whatever. Everything worked out for the better. Not, not showing any fucking loyalty to me. And I think that is a fucking, that's a piece of shit, dude. And I'm saying it on fucking worldwide fucking TV. Go fuck yourself. I second that. <laughs> <You're anyone. laughs> For other reasons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, websites and such. Uh, Remy Shirley has a question. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. I lost him. Okay. okay. Got your back. Strict Curl got popular early COVID, and all different types of lifters were trying it. Did you ever try strict curling? If so. Yeah, for a I have no desire to compete in strict curl. Okay. Oh, let's see. Trying to find the next suitable question to ask. Ask me a non-suitable one. Let's get a little exciting. <laughs> no, none of them are like bad, bad. Some yeah. of them. Some of them are just comments. So we're trying to stick to only questions. Gotcha. What's uh, Cody Plum saying here about warm-ups here? I'd like to know what both of you guys do do to warm up for bench workouts before you get under the bar <laughs> you want to tell them first God, Ryan? Scott, you know i've tried so many different ways uh and it's becoming more sophisticated for me i mean i get i get to the gym an hour before we start 
and I start with uh, front delt raises. I actually do bi bicep. I'm weird, Scott. I do bicep curls. I, I try to get blood in all the arms. I do some lat pull downs. I roll in a four inch PVC pipe. I do 135 or one, whatever the kilos is, 155 for multiple sets. Uh, you know, I just I feel like I need to warm up more thoroughly than I did back in the day when I was younger and, in, and invincible. At an older age, I just, something in my mind tells me to thoroughly warm up. And I, it takes me like half hour to get ready, Scott, before I go for the thousand and whatever. So how about you? I go one wheel, two wheels, 900. <laughs> the fuck? Tiny Meeker does that too. Are you shitting me, Scott? Did you skip all that? Word of God. Word of God. You conserve a lot of energy by doing so, but isn't there a tremendous amount of shock value from the two to the to the nine without feeling uh, the progression and weights? I mean, I've never tried it. I've been I've been doing it so right. long, and it works for me. Yeah, it does. Parent, it does definitely. Uh, what's the next question? Yeah, my guys trip the fuck out on me. I do one wheel raw. I do two wheels raw. I go eight wheels. <laughs> wow. You don't, do you do any side delt raises, lap pull downs, nothing? Just get on the bench? Okay. That's it. Fuck. Damn. But I have my little mix that I spray on me that heats the fuck out of me before What is that, I Scott? You mind sharing? I have a little special combo that i use i can't really get into i sent jimmy colby some of it okay. ask him he said, well you can't live without okay. it okay all, right. all right but spray that shit on and for 10 minutes you're fucking burning <laughs> Fuck bread and it literally is like warming up without warming up interesting okay i'll send okay, you thank some you, Scott. but i don't want to give any other motherfuckers information <laughs> Rob has a question. Um, bench press kings on VHS. My first petty theft from Blockbuster. LOL. What is one thing, one tweak, you wished you've done, you wished you would have done to mitigate injuries? Uh, I'm gonna re rack the seventh. Okay, that's good. Good answer. Bench injury I've had. Okay. Um, was it okay? Cody Plum's referencing a Dave Hoff interview yes. that we when we interviewed Dave Hoff, he spoke of uh, liquid breakfast. Ask, Ashley asked the question. We've heard a little bit about this liquid breakfast, but I think we should hear about it from the man himself. So can you tell this us is something a little Dave bit about Hoff the liquid breakfast mentioned a long time ago when we had him on the show? Oh, my yeah. liquid breakfast. <laughs> it's uh. I mean, I don't do it anymore, but I, <laughs> egg whites, I would just slam them down. But I also had another thing. I would put uh, raw oatmeal and protein powder and applesauce in that a blender. That sounds good. And then I would blend it all up and I would chug it down before the oatmeal expanded. Okay. You do, do you still do, you still do that? No, I don't do it anymore because I don't need to gain weight. I got, I got up to 390 that way, Holy 388. Shit. I was I was using the the packets yep. of oatmeal, you know, like plain, and I would just do one packet, two, three, four. So I was up to four packets of oatmeal, and I was like, fuck, you know, today I'm going five. <laughs> so I did it, slammed the fucking blender down. So I had, a, I had an in-home client. I used to have this Hummer that was all blown and fucking raised it was sick look like a big tonka <laughs> toy so i get in the motherfucker and i start it up and i take a breath and the fucking oatmeal oh. expands and it just goes oh. 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 Fucking. and i try to go out the window and the window's closed oh. right against it. fucking exploding everywhere <laughs> so four was the last, uh five good and uh you know, we move on from there. Speaking of vomiting, I know that uh, before every at every meet that I've been with you, I mean, uh, puking before you lift is uh, is kind of something that naturally happens. Is that um, just that's my mo? Right. Okay. Once, once I yeah. puke, I'm. Yeah. Cool. Are you telling me that? Alex Estrada has a off-topic question, kind of. We'll ask it. Okay, Scott. What 
comics are you still collecting and reading? I don't read any comics anymore, but I collect DC, Marvel, Dark Side. Um, I have about 50,000 comics. Quite the collection. Cody Plum has a question. How often do you guys use ammonia? I was inspired to try using it recently after seeing Scott take some monster pulls off his. By the way, be careful with that school smash, Ryan. It hits hard. Oh, by the way, there's another sponsor, Skull okay. Smash. Skull Smash ammonia, it's like crack for me. I oh, love that really? shit. Dude, they have a weed flavored, a weed scented one. It's called 420. Uh. And I don't smoke weed or nothing, but, and it doesn't smell like weed. It's like okay. pine. It's fucking good, bro. I smell that shit all day <laughs> long. I love it. They have whiskey, uh, they have mint, they have cinnamon, they have. All kinds of shit. Skull Smash. Uh, Stefan's the guy that owns it. And he's fucking awesome. Thank you, bro, for your Skull Smash. I really appreciate it. And if you're listening to this right now, bro, I need 10 of the weed fucking ones. I'm going to call you up tomorrow. That just reminded me of it. I need to reorder those. Those are awesome. But, um, dude, that shit will put hair on your chest. Is that so- like the other- Yeah, he sent me some whiskey ones. <clears throat> And uh, I cracked this motherfucker open, bro. And I snorted it, and it was so strong that I went to the bathroom and puked. Whoa. It was fun. And then I benched 1,000 pounds after I puked. I was like, fuck, am I sick? And I was like, oh, yeah, it must be the ammonia. And then I went out there and had a good workout. So but that shit was strong. I pulled off that. I was like, whoa. Perfect. So Skull Smash is the best product out there, you're saying, Scott? Yeah. Ammonia, okay. it's unbelievable. So I'm looking to invest in some myself. He's a super cool dude. He's hard to get a hold of because he's busy doing other shit. But that man, that's a serious cat piss, bro. Let me tell you. Uh, Pete, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Gianna Paulus. Gianna Paulus. I, butch- I butchered that one. Gianna Paulus. But that's a question. Heard you are putting on a bench meet. Can you confirm and give some de- details if that's true? I'm having a small bench meet on June 26th. It's a warm-up for me for my July meet. I'm only taking 30 lifters on, um, and you can go on my Facebook. I'm locked out of my IG right now. I'm trying to get into that, but I can't seem to fix it right now, so that's why I haven't been on IG lately. Um, But um, it's called. It's an IPA meet. It's the first IPA meet in California. I'm now the IPA chairman. So, yeah, so we're doing that. And I switched over to IPA because the APF, they're not giving any support. They don't do anything for their lifters. They just, it's like, they just think it's going to run itself. And I mean, on the West Coast, it's basically dead. And I mean, I throw APF meets and nobody would fucking show up comparatively to the other feds, you know. But now that the IPA is going on, you know, I brought it to California. Um, Chalet is a great guy and he really Mm -hmm. hooked me up and. You know, we have this first one, and it's called The Beginning. That's what nice. the meet's called. Nice. And equipped only. There's 30 people. I don't care if it's women or men. There's no weight. There's no uh, age classes and all this bullshit. You lift, you place, you win. Simple as that. I don't want to hear, oh, I'm 45 <laughs> to 49. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about that. So. This guy named, Ty- this guy named Tiny right. Meeker has a question, Scott. All right, well, hold on. We're going to hold on the yeah. tiny shit because I really got to take a piss. Oh, so you're going to keep me for like 30 seconds, and then I'm coming right back. I will right? wait for you, Scott. We'll wait. All right, buddy. I'll be right back. <laughs> How many people have done this in the middle of your fucking Nobody. You're the first. Huh? You'll be the first, Scott, and you're more than welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have Scott back Should shortly. <laughs> I hear him. Maybe we'll hear him pee. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a first. He might break wind as he's doing it. We'll find out. So listen. Shh. <laughs> What's our next one here? Tiny Meeker. We're going to hop on a Tiny oh, Meeker right. question here next. Tiny. What is it? Oh, 
long time to sit, you know. All, All right. right, welcome back, back, sir. All right. All right, Tiny Meeker, next All right. question. Okay. Hey, Scott, what was the fastest car you had you ever had? How much horsepower? Fastest you went, and it was awesome spending some time with you in Texas. Plan on being in PA. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> no, okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I got an 1162 horsepower Camaro. Oh, fuck. That all body carbon fiber, ridiculous. Um, I've gone about 200 miles an hour in it. Um, it'll top out at about 240. Nice. Um, but I raced a McLaren 720. And we were just fucking flying, and I didn't have a big tail on the back of it yet, so my car started to take off like a fucking airplane. Oh. So I down, it wouldn't go. And dude, I pushed the gas down at fucking two hundred miles an hour, and it was like boom, like I had way more fucking power in it. Yeah. So um, that would probably be the fastest that I've gone in a car. Damn, son, that's crazy. Yeah. Purgatory so. Strength has a question. What is your opinion on speed benching? I don't believe in speed at all. Well, let me rephrase that. Speed work has no involvement as far as 100% musculature. Speed work is a lot of joint work, and I don't believe in that because it just fucks up your joints. That but what I do in is staying tight and explosiveness which then transfers the speed work but it's not really considered speed work because speed work is like ah, la, 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 la. it's like that which is fucking bullshit that's west side bullshit so that's a that's a crock of shit so um mental strength systems is all about torque and explosiveness understandable okay tiny meeker is back with another question tiny what up, big boy? <laughs> what is your weekly grocery bill? Fuck. You know, I eat home. We probably spend about 500 bucks a week Damn. on food. Paul Lawfer. Hey, Scott. What exercise do you recommend to strengthen triceps? Uh, work out. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. You know, everybody, you're all into like, oh, strengthen your triceps, strengthen this. If you have a balanced workout program that you're hitting your whole body in sequence all the fucking time, close grip triceps yeah. on a bench, uh, tricep kick down, kickbacks, um, tricep extensions on a cable machine. I mean, those are the things that I really stick with. Um, but there's so many different variations of triceps you know and each person has what works best for them right. you know what i mean like i'm not like a skull crusher guy but you know there's guys that swear fucking skull crushers True. you know what i mean um so you know i do what works for me which may not work for you um so what i say you do is you know i always like close grip triceps after i bench um, I like cable tricep extensions. I like dumbbell kickbacks. Um, that's what works for okay. me. Okay. You know. Mr. Elite Entertainment. Scott, what were your numbers when you first started lifting, and have you had any powerlifting coaches in the past? I've had quite a few powerlifting coaches. I've had Joe Onturi, I've had Justice Owens, I've had uh, J.M. Blakely. Um, those were basically the three, and then I kind of took over myself for that. You know, honestly, I wish I really did have a coach that would drive me further, but I don't have anybody, you know what I mean? It's kind of like me at this point, um, you know. Hey, so, Scott, I didn't mean to interrupt I, I I didn't mean to interrupt, but back at the Arnold 2002, that guy that was handing off to you, was his name Joe Avigliano, or what was his name? Oh, yeah, Joe Avigliano, not Ontario. Yeah. Joe Avigliano, that was yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Chris Smith has a question. I fucking mind, <laughs> so. Uh, Scott, is your gym invite only if I am ever allowed over the border? And are there any swingers clubs nearby in Hollywood? <laughs> You're talking about <laughs> I know. I, I, know. I like, saw the second part of the question. How they that no motherfucker, you ain't allowed in my gym, okay? Uh, <laughs> Here's an interesting question. Mr. Elite Entertainment. Scott, what is your opinion on cannabis for medical purpose? I remember reading about yourself opening up the Men- Mendica Wellness Center. How has it helped in your recovery for your injuries? I mean, look, I did not open up a weed shop for me. Um, I opened it up because, you know, people are hooked on oxys and Vicodins and, you know, all these major drugs and they're fucking killing people over it. You ever seen a weed head kill anybody? No. So I figured, hey, if these guys can do weed and get some effect out of it, then that's fine. I tried it. It didn't work for me. The pain was right. still there. I'm 24 hours a day, unless I'm laying down, you know, I, I got a certain amount of steps in my leg and then I'm fucking done. Um, but it made me lazy and it made me lethargic and I couldn't run my business yeah. right. And it didn't work for me. And I'm different than any other fucking weed head. When I smoke weed, I don't get hungry and I don't get tired. So I stay up all fucking night watching movies and I need to eat every three hours and I couldn't do that when I mm. smoked. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't fit in my lifestyle. Okay. But as far as like, if it will work for you, sure, why not? I mean, you know, you know, to a narcotic, you know, when I got in my accident, they had me on morphine and they didn't take me off the drip. So they sent me home with like dilaudid. Oh. I took like fucking two of those pills Dude, my dick was twitching, bro. I was like, oh, my God. It was the best feeling I ever felt in my life. You know what I did? I hopped over to the toilet, and I dumped the bottle in and flushed the toilet. Because I knew if I took one more of those, I'd be a fucking dope head. Yeah. And then I was doing Vicodins. And what happened was they had me, because I was fucking 390 pounds. They had me on four 10-milligram Vicodins every four hours. shit. So... I was so fucked up and like, I'm not a pill guy. I'm not really an anything guy, but dude, the pills made me feel like shit. So I was like, you know what? I really wasn't in that much pain anymore. So I stopped. So I'm at this Korean restaurant with my family and all of a sudden I feel like I'm going to fucking die. I'm like, dude, you got to get me fucking out of here. So the gym was closer. So we went to the gym. I'm on crutches running like top speed on crutches. My foot was in this fucking like, rods going through my leg all the way to my toes with like an aircraft fucking simulator on it. That's how the design they have. And I'm throwing up and shitting at the same time for like 20 minutes. I'm like dying. So my wife walks up, she goes here because I stopped throwing up. She goes, just take this Vicodin and you know, just to take the edge off 15 minutes later, I wasn't sick. And I was like, fuckers got me hooked on drugs. So I go to the doctor I'm like, dude, I'm a fucking professional athlete. What the fuck are you doing? And he puts his hand on me. I'll never forget. And he gives me this look in my eye. And he goes, son, you need them. I'm all, if you need your fucking arm, you better get it off my shoulder. I'm going to break that motherfucker. <laughs> dude, I got to the office and I weaned myself off Viking. It took me six months. Six months? Four every four hours for three weeks. Three and three quarters every four hours for three weeks, three and a half for three weeks, all the way until I was taking a half a Vicodin every four hours, just so I wouldn't get fucking Ooh. sick. And I, them and I was like, you know what? I'm fucking done. Yeah. So I never went back to him. And I go, apparently that's hard to do, but I'm a determined motherfucker. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm not dealing with, I'm not going to be a fucking drug addict in my life. I need to live my life. I got yeah. kids. Thing I got, and I had to compete. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that That's was a scary that story there. Yeah. Shit. It's scary how fast it happened. Uh, uh, Remy Shirley has a question. When you pulled with Larry Wheels, you looked superior. What do you think of his progression, and do you think he could continue to climb the ranks? 
Um, I think he's good. I'd like to have a super match with him. I'd like to break his fucking arm off. <laughs> oh. You know, he's training with my boy, with one of my coaches, Devin Lorette in Canada, which is, he's one of the best in the whole fucking world. I, I go up to his place for a week at a time and I just train all the fucking time. So I know he's getting some good training, but when I get back in shape, I'm going to fuck your ass up, bro. <laughs> so let's <laughs> Mr. Elite Entertainment has a question that I think you'll find funny. But, gotta tell you, okay. but hold on. I love Larry Wheels. I yeah. think he's a great fucking guy. Dude, he did my podcast. We had a fucking great time. And uh, he's, a, he's a great fucking guy, man. He's just, you know, he's yes. young. So he does shit to earn himself yeah. all yeah. the time. And But he was going to come back here to L.A. And we were going to start training together. But then the lockdown happened. And I haven't seen him since. But. Dude, what a good businessman. That motherfucker is gnarly, yeah. bro. Even though I sounded mean like I wanted to take him on, I fucking love that to death. And I think he's a sweetheart. He's got a, his girlfriend's yeah. a sweetheart. We had a great, and, uh, you know, I still want to fuck him up. So, Larry, give me a call. I'll be done this convention in a couple months and we can get <laughs> it on. Love you. And I love the progression you're doing, bro. You're doing fine. I saw schoolboy the other day. And Schoolboy's a bad motherfucker. Okay. So. Uh, Mr. Elite Entertainment has a question, and I think it, it, it reminds me of an argument. You, well, we'll just read it. Okay. All of us bros would like to send our sincere thanks to Scott for annihilating the beta male vegan gains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no problem, guys. No problem. <laughs> Um, uh, purgatory strength he is the beta yeah. male for sure um, Scott any interest in doing a seminar on the east coast absolutely uh, get a hold of me you can email me andysgym at gmail.com and uh, we can set it up I'd like a minimum of 25 guys and um Give my gym a call so at 818-399-0905. Remy Shirley. Arm size and arm size when you were 388. When I was 388, my arms were 24 and three quarters. Uh, when right now they're about 22s. Yeah. But Same here. uh no. Yeah. I you know what? I just uh Arm size is like a beginner fucking thing for bodybuilding and powerlifting. I guess manhood. How big are your fucking yeah. arms? Gives a fuck how big I am. I just want to put a number up on the bench. <laughs> Same here. Chris Smith. Scott, what kind of bikes have you owned? Uh, Hondas. GSXRs. Ducati. Uh, Harley Davidson. Triumph. I like bikes. Nice. <laughs> Tiny Meeker got to say. I went grocery shopping for Scott when he was in Texas. Just insane. Scott can eat. Please tell Mike. <laughs> please tell Mike. Thank you again. Great show. Thank you. Hey, Tiny Mike, fucking loves you, bro. We had a great time out there. Uh, I mean, look, there was the deadlift platform. We didn't know what the fuck was going on, so shit happens. We all learn from it. Uh, I'm not holding anything. Uh, I wanted to win that fucking meet really right. bad. And I, w I was in shape for it. But um, I had a great time when I was there. You were so hospitable. And I love you to death, bro. I can't wait to see you and hang out with you. And, I mean, Ryan, he's I one know. of us. That motherfucker. You know? And, um, you know, I love him. Same. Definitely. Very good guy. Uh, Cody Plum, last question. Oh, that's the last one? Okay. Yeah. Scott, you should come visit us up here in the Northwest in July. There's an APF meet going down. It would be so awesome to have you. Scott's going somewhere else in July. Yes, I know yeah, that. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm a little booked out in July, but I appreciate the invite. Yeah. But really, hey, guys, anywhere in the world, I don't care where it is, you pay my airfare, you pay my hotel, you pay my food, and you pay my rate. I want 25 lifters or more. Um, it's a hundred bucks a piece and, uh, you will get Scott Mendelson and I'll give you a fucking 
I'll give you a seminar that you ain't going to ever forget. I'll even throw some arm wrestling in nice. as well. So we can do sports if you guys want to. But I, uh, you know, doing a seminar is like sleeping for me. I've done so many of them that it's like, it's, it's, it's fun. It's like talking to the boys, you know? So I really enjoy teaching people that want to learn. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's a passion for me. I, I love to help people that are hungry. I got a little question I like to ask. What happened to Andy Fiedler? Remember him? Dude, that was a he bad, was bad yeah. bro. Andy, uh, he had some issues yep. in his life. And you probably know what they were. I probably was told a long time ago by somebody that was close to him, and I don't remember, but he was yeah. a badass bencher, raw. And, and I know you worked with him in the shirt, and he was. Oh, I trained. He was fucking ridiculous. He broke the world record with me. He's one of the one of my 30 world champions that I've made. I so. think he competed at 275, didn't he? He did. He hit a uh he hit like an eight eight yep. thirty six exactly or something. Right. Like I thought it was eight thirty four or something, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then my other guy, um, Alberto Franco broke his record and hit an eight sixty nine. So it was kind of cool. I got to train one guy and he broke the world record. And then my other guy came and broke his world record. Wow. So it was good, man. I enjoy training guys that break records and win world championships. And, you know, because you know, at this point, it's a branch off our right. tree. Because, I mean, how long are we going to be doing this shit for? You know what I mean? Well, you know, you, there comes. You say that huh? question, you know, I, I look at Bill Gillespie, you know, the guy's 60 years old and he's still able to do it. So that's promising. Well, fucking Bill had a fucking seizure right on the stage. I didn't bro. know what I didn't was, know what happened. Was that a seizure? Yeah, dude, he fucking. I I was tripping, bro. I was like, he was shaking. Fuck? I didn't know what was wrong. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a yeah. seizure, bro. I mean, it was it was pretty heavy for a minute, but he recovered. But you know, I mean, honestly, he shouldn't be out okay. there now. And I'm not talking shit no. about Bill. He's he's, he's a legend. You know, but he's fucking 62 years old. And when I saw that shit happen, bro, he went down, bro. Oh, he did. Oh. Yeah, dude, it was fucking scary okay. shit, bro. That's, that's you know, scary. I wish. But I, I think, you know, he's got a good coaching thing going. I think he should do that. And I mean, the day I fucking seizure on a stage, I'm yeah, fucking same, out. Same, Scott. Same. You know. All right, so. we got one more question, Scott. Jerry, cool. What tips did you give Hoff on bringing up the bench? Did him taking off from full power for a bit, to th do you think that's what helped him get over a 1,000? You know, with Hoff, it was a technique issue. Um, he had the power in him, and he tried it a lot of times and didn't get it. And I saw what, what he was lagging in. So he flew out to California, and we, we fixed it for him. Um, and you know what I like? I like when I help somebody and they give me props. You know, let me tell you about Dave Hoff. First of all, he is the strongest motherfucker in the world yeah. by far. All three lifts. There's nobody, nobody close to him. And nobody hold a fucking candle to that. He's a nice fucking guy. He's like yeah. a brother. Um, he almost was my brother-in-law. He dated my sister. I, heard, I remember hearing that. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? He used to come out for a week at a time every year after he won the Nationals. You know, we would have a great time and just fucking work out and just balls to the fucking wall. Um, and I really enjoy him as a person, you know. He's the nicest, fucking most genuine guy. A lot of people are like, oh, yeah, he's a dick and, you know, he's aggressive and but. Dude, when you're lifting, bro, I'll kill a motherfucker you're around me, bro. Stay the fuck right. away from me. After I'm done lifting. You want to talk to me? That's fine. But to get into the state that we have to get into to do what we have to do, don't fucking come up and ask me for a fucking autograph or ask him, you know, or when he's done fucking doing a lift and he's coming off stage, don't go to and give him a hug. You're going to get your fucking teeth knocked out. <laughs> you know what the fuck we're doing. You know what I mean? You know, dude, there's a video that my ex, Serafina McDonald, took of us when we both tried to get into a car. Oh, uh, you and Hoff, thing? right? 
Yeah, I saw. It yeah, barely dude. fit. I don't know how you guys got in it, or if even if it even drove. Bro, it was, dude, I was like three seventy, and he was like three hundred five. He's like five six, bro. You know, dude, he's like a fucking box, bro. You know what I mean? And dude, I watched that video. I had to repost it. It was from like five years ago, but it was so fucking funny, bro. Because neither one of us could reach the seatbelt. Because I was like, all right, how are we gonna do oh, this? Shit. And I was like, bro. Grab my seatbelt, and then he put it on, and I reached over, and I grabbed his, and I... It was, fun. <laughs> was that a rental car? Yeah, it was a rental, because my car was in the shop, so I was like, what the fuck? You know I wouldn't have a car that small. <laughs> Dude, little Mercedes, and it was just fucking... I didn't, I didn't realize, because... First of all, I didn't know Sarah was filming, and... We weren't trying to make a joke out of it, bro. It was, like, yeah. real. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> And the comments out of us, dude, it was just fucking, I'm so glad. That was awful, Scott. I remember seeing that. (laughs) Funny. What's the next one here? Any more questions there, Ashley? Uh, This one? But you skipped that one. Oh, yeah. uh, Another one about Devon. I don't know anything. Uh, We can ask the questions uh, right here. Chris Smith. I don't know if he'll understand. Okay, if he does, we can go back to the other one. I'll read it. Hey, Scott, Devon came out here to, too because before and De- Devin, sorry, Devin. Okay. okay, 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 Devin. British there was Columbia, another question about him that we skipped, but we can go back to it. Hey, Scott, De- Devin came out here too. BC. Be- I think it's British Columbia. BC came out here to BC. I thought it was supposed to be because. Okay, that makes more sense. Came out here to BC before and I got to pull with him. He is mint. Ryan, if I'm ever allowed in Washington State. Uh, more questions about the swingers. No I'm swingers. Right. No. So no. let's go back to the other one that says, how does it feel to pull Devin? Is he the... What? I've never been in a swinger. So I've never, yeah, that, stop, I'm not no. sure why the swingers Strip clubs. Strip like, clubs, yeah. <laughs> but not swinger clubs. I don't know. That's yeah. not me. Um, yeah, I saw the question mark at the end, but I didn't realize it was another swingers one. But this one this one was, um, how does it feel to pull Devin? Is he this legend? Is he the legend us Canadians say he is? I'm from Saskatoon. Saskatchewan. Sask- Saskatchewan. <laughs> Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. <laughs> All right, let me tell you about Devin. First of all, Devin is like my Yoda. You know what I mean? He is just a serious motherfucker, and he's one of the baddest dudes in the world, and he's my bro. I fucking love him to death. I've never beaten Devin. Um, I've come close to where I pulled it, but he's managed to hold me off until I gassed out. Um, He's a fucking beast, and he's like six foot six, and he's got like 12 foot (laughs) arms, and his hands are huge. The dude's just made for arm wrestling, and he's been doing it so long that his stamina is, like, ridiculous. You know what I mean? He's a beat. Now, Eric Spoto's beat him a few times. Spoto's a much more experienced arm wrestler than me. He's been doing it way longer than I have. Um, Spoto could be one of the baddest dudes in the fucking world. But Devin will gas Spoto out. You know, Spoto will nail him a couple times, and then Devin will be on the game. And then Spoto can't fuck with him after that, you know. But um, Devin's the real fucking deal. He's you Canadians should be fucking proud to have that man in your country. Very cool. End of transmission. Hey, hey Scott, how's Eric Spoto doing? I, we don't hear much about him. Is he doing uh, health wise? Doing okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's doing arm wrestling. Him and my boy Eric. They're two Eric's. They just opened a gym in, okay. in Vegas. So they're doing that and. Uh, I think Eric's getting ready to compete pretty soon. He's arm wrestling full bore now. He fucked up his tendon and his fucking oh, and his uh, bicep tendon, so his benching I think is done. But um, he's still a big bad okay. motherfucker. A lot of people ask about him on the show about having him in as a guest, and I don't know. I don't know how to contact him. I might have his phone number somewhere in my. Oh, I'll call him up and get a hold of him. I spoke to him like two days ago. Oh, I appreciate hour. that, Scott. Because a lot, a lot of fans, yeah. We actually. Me and Eric actually opened up a week. I remember. I heard I heard the yeah. stories. Yeah, yeah. So listen, my battery's okay. low. I don't know how it's gonna be, but I'm okay for now. But if I conk okay. out, 
Uh, well, we're going to do why. one more question, Scott, we and we're questions. shutting it down. Uh, Jacob K has a question, and then we'll shut the show down. Oh, another no more. one came in, but okay. You may have to do one a little bit more than okay. one more, but okay, it's okay. we got there. two more, so we'll try to. Mendy, how has your bench press training changed over the years? What were the support exercises you did when you set raw records in 2002 and 2005 and later when you bench in only a shirt? All my support works always the same. Um, I haven't changed anything um, really at all. I've always been thorough in my workouts. Uh, and I will continue to be thorough in my workouts. Although now I'm working out harder. I mean, I train balls to the wall, but now it's like it seems because I'm older, I have to train harder in order to stay in shape. Harder than I did when I, I was younger. Mm-hmm. Remy Shirley has a question. Do you ever wish that you went to arm wrestling earlier or is the bench still your main choice? Bench is forever and always my main choice but i think if i would have went into arm wrestling in like 07 06 i would have fucked some <laughs> shit up way worse i'll tell you that much okay that was well, i didn't know i wish i would have known about it you know i didn't realize that it was like a big ass sport you know is there I mean? any money in arm wrestling but, spot? yeah there's a, i've, I've okay, made some okay. good money in it yeah okay well that's all we got scott uh thank you for your time and thank you for being a yeah, guest man it's uh, great to have you our fans, I know our have, fans been have been you. seriously looking forward to this yeah when we when we say who who what guests do we want your name always comes up always comes up I, fills the chat box i thank you so. for making time for us man Definitely. this has been a lot of fun i hope you enjoyed yourself and answering all these damn questions we have for you we, we squ- skipped a lot of the comments just because we were sticking to questions but there's like a lot of positive comments towards you and yeah. people just very appreciative that you're here that you came on here and they were really looking forward to it so thank you very cool you know i had um i mean as far as i'm concerned i just hung out with my boy ryan and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a great time and i you know please have me on your show again and hey now you owe me one when I start my podcast. Well, you up, know, Scott, right? I, I plan on coming down and doing it live with you in your in your podcast room and, and getting some oh, training in when uh, sometime. Yeah, totally. And remember, like I told you, I have a whole setup here. I can house you and everything when you come down. So just get a plane ticket, cruise on down, unless you guys want to get yeah. a hotel. But I have your own, your own setup, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I had a blast tonight. It was, I didn't know what yeah. to expect. I mean, I knew we were going to, but I really, I really enjoyed myself and I love you, brother. And thank you so much for having You're me. You're welcome, Scott. It was a pleasure having you. And I, I thank you uh, time and time again, man. And uh, I hope the next time we meet up, it's on a platform or at your gym or somewhere, you know, yeah. in person. <laughs> hey, and all you fans out there, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate all of you. I appreciate you being there. I appreciate your loyalty. I appreciate everything. You know, without the fan, we would be nothing. So I don't want you guys to think that you don't mean what you mean to me because you do. I love you all. And, um, you know, fuck, who else can fucking do what we do and, 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 and have the appreciation from people all over the world? You know, it's, it's, you know. I always tell everybody if I died right now, which right. I don't want to, if I died right this second, there's nothing in the world that I regret. I've had the best times in this fucking sport of powerlifting. I've been all over the world because of powerlifting. And I have met some of the greatest fucking people in the world. Ryan, you're it, bro. And I love the fuck out of you. And, uh, you know, I'll see you next time. I appreciate that, Scott. Yes, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're signing off. And thank you, Scott. And thank you, everybody. And we'll all see you. you again next week, everybody. Have a great night. And a good good night, week. Scott. Bye, Scott. Good night, brother.